In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install macOS Sonoma on a 2008 Mac Pro. So here's my current Mac Pro setup. It has a 2 3 GHz quad-core Intel Xeon processor. It originally came with 8 GB of RAM, but I upgraded to 24 GB of RAM. It came with the original NVIDIA GeForce 8800 GT video card, but I upgraded it and replaced it with the AMD Radeon RX 590. I'm using a standard 1TB 3.5-inch hard drive, which I'll be upgrading into an SSD in future upgrades. And I also added a BCM94360 CD Wi-Fi Bluetooth 4.0 card. That will give me AirDrop and handoff continuity functionality. And here's what you'll need. A USB flash drive, a USB keyboard and mouse, a USB 2.0 or 3.0 hub if you are planning to install Ventura or Sonoma. If you are planning to install Ventura or Sonoma, you're going to need the USB and keyboard and mouse plugged into the USB hub. And then the USB hub is plugged into one of the USB ports on the Mac Pro. You're going to remove the original Bluetooth card that it came with this Mac Pro. Now you might not need this, but you might want a second keyboard just to do some PRAM resettings. For my case, uh, I couldn't reset the PRAM when I had my original keyboard plugged into the USB hub. So I used a second keyboard. For my video card, I needed a new power adapter. So I got the six pin to eight pin PCI Express video card power adapter cable. And this is where you will place in the Wi-Fi Bluetooth card as well. Just a quick disclaimer, make sure to back up your data before you start this installation process. You will notice that some of the clips in this video are sped up. That way I could keep the video as short as I can, but still get all the necessary information out. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to go to the Open Core Legacy Patcher website. And before you continue on, you want to first make sure that you have the necessary computer to make this patcher. And once you go to the supported models area from the Open Core Legacy Patcher website, you also want a Mac computer that's running at least El Capitan, so that way you can make installers for Mac OS Ventura or later. So this patcher is designed to target like Big Sur and pretty much later. You can also run it on Yosemite, but it looks like you are required to have El Capitan to make a patcher if you want to run Ventura or later. And they also list all the Mac models that are supported. And also they have some issues with it along and you could read through each one by clicking on it and I'll have more information about it. Now, if you want to download the Open Core Legacy Patcher application, you're going to click on the little GitHub tab right there, and they'll bring you to the GitHub of Open Core Legacy Patcher. And then you're just going to go on the right hand side right here. So the current version is 1.5.0. And you're just going to scroll down and you're going to download the open core patcher GUI.app.zip. And all that will do is it will download that package and then you'll be able to find it in your applications folder or you could even run it on your desktop. Once you have opened up the open core legacy patcher application, we're first going to need the Mac OS installer. So I'm just going to click on create Mac OS installer and I'm just going to download it. And now it's going to find the available software. Now, cool thing about this Open Core Legacy Patcher is you could actually download the current copies of the latest Mac OS, which is Sonoma, or even the previous ones as well. In this case, I want to use Mac OS Sonoma for my Mac Pro. So I'm just going to click on download. Once I selected Sonoma and I click download. And now it's going to download the latest copy and it's going to store this copy into your applications folder. This might take a while depending how fast your internet connection is. So just wait a while. So after I finished downloading the Mac OS installer and extracting it, now it's going to give you this prompt asking you if you want to create the Mac OS installer. So the next thing you got to do is you want to make sure you plug in your flash drive. And also you want to format it into Mac OS extended journal. And I'm using a hundred and 28 gigabyte flash drive, 64 gigabyte one will be sufficient as well. So once you have your flash drive plugged in, you just go ahead, click yes. 
And now you can select the Mac OS installer. Now it looks at the, again, your application folder. In this case, my application folder has two Mac OS installers. And I'm just gonna choose the Mac OS Sonoma one. And now it's gonna ask you to select the local disk. In this case, I'm gonna select my USB flash drive. And you can see mine says USB 3.2.1 FD. Yours might be a little bit different. But choose your USB flash drive. And then it'll ask you just to confirm if you want to erase the content that are on that flash drive. And it will delete anything that's on that flash drive. So I'm just going to click yes. And it's now going to create the installer. And depending how fast your USB port is, if it's 3.0, it should be a little bit faster. If it's 2.0, it's going to take a little bit while for it, it to create the installers. So once the installer has been created, you get this message asking you if you want to install OpenCore to the flash drive. So normally, I will click on yes, but I need to double check one more thing. So I'm just going to click no. Now you see right here in the model under the OpenCore Legacy Patcher logo, it's showing that this patcher is going to be used on this MacBook Air. And that's not what I want. What I want is I want to select my Mac Pro. So if you are using another Mac to create this patcher, you want to make sure you select the proper Mac model for your open core legacy patcher USB flash drives. So in order to do that, we're going to go to settings and in the target model, I'm going to select the Mac Pro 3 comma 1 that is for my 2008 Mac Pro. Once I selected my target model, I'm just going to click return and now I'm going to build and install OpenCore to the flash drives. So I'm going to click on build and install OpenCore and then I'm going to click install to disk. And I'm going to select my flash drive, not the internal drive that you're using on your current Mac. So I'm going to click on the flash drive. And it's going to install it directly inside of the flash drive EFI partition. And that's the one that I want it to install to. So I'm going to click on that. And it's not installing open core to the flash drive onto the EFI partition. Once it's done, you're going to get this message that's ready to be used. So now we're going to plug the flash drive into our Mac Pro, and then we're going to start the installation process via OpenCore. So when you're turning your Mac Pro with the flash drive, you might not see the installer immediately pop up. Sometimes it might not even pop up. And after doing some research, what I found out is that if you are using a video card that's made for a PC, you're going to have to reset the PRAM. Now there's a great video from Jesse's flying channel and they show you exactly how you do it. But basically you would just press the option command PNR or the windows alt key and the PNR if you're using a PC keyboard and you'll know it worked because the next time you reboot the computer, you're going to hear this loud chime. And then the installer should appear and when it appears, just go ahead, click on it and wait for it to load. Then go to this utility and click continue. Select the internal drive that you're gonna be installing Sonoma to. Then click on erase and you could give it a name if you like, but make sure the format is set to APFS. Let it format, click done, and then close out the this utility window and go ahead and click on install macOS Sonoma. Click continue and then select the internal drive and then click continue. And now we're going to wait for the installation process to be completed. Now, during the installation process, you'll notice it's going to reboot often. And what happened was after it rebooted the first time around, I wasn't able to see my internal drive anymore. So what I did was I had to do another PRAM reset. And when it reappears, you want to select the macOS installer. 
Once you pick that icon, it's going to continue the installation process. And again, it will probably reboot again. So it did reboot again for me. And all I did was I had to just do another PRAM reset. This will be my third one. And once I did that, I was able to see the installer again. And basically, you're just going to keep doing this process until the installation is complete. Once the installation is complete, you should now see the name of the drive. So for my case, back in Disk Utility, I left it untitled. But if you named it something else, you should, you should see the name of it. And now what's it going to do? It's going to load up macOS Sonoma. And this is basically where you're just going to do the setup process. Once you finish the setup process, you're going to be on the desktop. All right, so here we are on a Mac Pro with Sonoma installed. So the few things that we need to do now is we actually need to install the root patches. So normally this window will appear, but if for some reason it doesn't automatically appear, you could just go to the finder, go to applications, and then you can just scroll down and look for the open core legacy patcher application right there. Now in this case, I'm just going to patch this up. Now you'll notice that it's a little bit slow at times uh, when you're trying to just navigate around it. So it's slow right now, but once you install the patches, you know, things would be much more speedier. So I'm just going to do that right now. So now the patches has been applied and I'm also, before I reboot, I'm going to install the open core patcher into the internal drive. So I'm just going to click ignore right now. I'm going to hit return to main menu. And then I'm also going to build and install open core. And then I'm going to click on install to disk. And I'm going to select the internal drive that I'll be using. And then I'll select its EFI partition. Once that's done, I'm going to hit reboot right now. And I also have to do one final PRAM. After that, we're just going to wait for the OS to load. Now, what I've seen so far is halfway through the loading process, for some reason, your display might lose a signal, but that is normal. Um, for some reason, it does that, but after a while, it's just going to pop back up and then the loading process will continue. And once it's finished loading, you can now log back in to macOS Sonoma. All right, so here I am on the desktop. So first thing I want to check out is the about this Mac. And we have a early Mac Pro 2008. And yep, showing the Radeon RX 598 gigabyte graphics card at 24 gigs of RAM, the latest version of Sonoma. So that seems to be working. And also my Wi-Fi card right here. So I'm able to find networks. Yep, there we go. And I'm also going to see if Bluetooth is working as well. Because I did upgrade the card. And let's see. This looks like it is working. Let me, I have a Bluetooth keyboard right here. There it is. It shows the keyboard. Let's see if I compare it. Yeah, there it is. I'm able to use Bluetooth as well. So I'm able to pair 
my keyboard. So we have Bluetooth working and let's see if I'm able to use Wi-Fi as well. There we go. So let's see if I can airdrop something from my iPhone into this computer. Oh, there it is. So there's my iPhone 15. So I'll just accept. And there it is. Yeah, it seems to work. So overall, that's the installation process. Now, the one thing I did notice that was kind of strange is that I couldn't use my USB microphone when I plugged it into one of the USB ports on the Mac Pro. And it seems like that's an issue right now from what I've been reading. Uh, so what I did was I plugged the USB microphone that I'm using right now into the USB hub that I was using to install OpenCore Legacy Patchers. So that's a little workaround. I'm not sure what is going on, but when I plug in flash drives to the USB ports on the Mac Pro, they work. So if for some reason certain USB devices doesn't work on your on your Mac Pro after installing Sonoma via OpenCore, try using a USB hub. Another thing I noticed is the internal DVD drive does not work on this 2008 Mac Pro when you have Sonoma or even Ventura install and the reason why is because the PADA connector the parallel ATA uh, connector is not supported with open core legacy patcher since Monterey and given that the Mac Pro uses a parallel ATA connector for its internal DVD drive it's not going to work unless you install Big Sur or below uh, if you do want to use DVD drive you're going to have to use an external DVD USB drive or you can install a SATA type DVD drive. So that's how you will get Mac OS Sonoma running on a 2008 Mac Pro. Now I want to know what are your thoughts? Have you tried this process? What has been your experience? And also I'm going to leave all the links in the description. That's product links, uh, the link to the Jesse's flying video in the description. And some of the links below are going to be affiliate links. So I do make a commission if you do use that link to purchase those items. If you're looking for reviews on prepaid carriers, you could check out that playlist right there. And if you want another tutorial, I had a, another video where I install Ventura on a MacBook Air. You could check out that tutorial right there.